Hello, I'm John, and today I want to talk to you guys about an efficient way of routing your reverb. Now, what I've seen some people do, and it's not necessarily a wrong way to do it, but it's just not as efficient. So for this example, uh, I'm going to load up Citrus here, and I'm going to click on the presets here and just open up a default patch. And first thing, I'm going to kind of take this down because for some reason, Citrus always comes up really loud. So we have this sine wave here, right? And what people tend to do is they'll put the the reverb on the track itself. So what I mean by that is I'll route this to two on this guy. And some people will click here and they'll, you know, select Fruity Reverb, for example. And then they basically call it a day, maybe dial in some settings that they like. And that's basically how they're going to get the reverb on that channel. So I'll put the wet up all the way so you can kind of listen that it's working. So we hear the reverb there. Now not, that's not really a wrong way to do it. Like I said earlier, it's just not as efficient. So a little bit better way to do that is let's replace this with none. So let's take that off there. And instead of putting it on the channel, what we do is over here we have some send tracks. And FL was kind of nice enough to kind of set this template up for you, which is really cool. And it's kind of convenient. So you have a delay and a reverb. And both will function the same way. So reverb. And, and, okay, just to clarify in case you're thinking like when I say they're going to function the same way, not necessarily the effects, but how this affects routing is going to work just so that's clear. So this here already has Fruity Reverb 2 on it. And over here it has the delay already on it. You can use any reverb that you have or if you have any external reverbs that you like to bring into FL, you could totally do that. So let's click this up here. It's the same one that we just saw. Now we want this, this sine wave here to have some reverb on it. So let's crank this wet up all the way just for uh, this demonstration. And we're going to select this track here. Let's just kind of rename it so it's a little bit more organized. Let's put sign. So on this sign, we want to put reverb. We'll see it will go all the way down on this fader, and then we'll come down to this little arrow coming down here. And you'll notice all these little wires come out of it. Now, what this means is that this signal is getting also sent elsewhere. So for example, this signal here is getting sent to the master. So when I hit a key, you'll also see the master have some signal on it too. But there's also four little other ones here and those four end up on these four tracks here. So if you want more reverb on this track or to just to assign it, it's super simple. You click the track, you see this little knob right here, you kind of bring that up to the amount desired. And if you want, want this all the way, if it's all the way up, this basically means that this is using the full power of the, your settings that you have on this reverb plugin. So I'll hit it for the demonstration. You can kind of hear that the reverb is indeed there. And then, let's see, let's back it off a little bit. And then you can kind of dial this into taste. I think this way is a lot better to do it only because for a couple, for actually two reasons, I think. I think the first reason really is to save CPU. And that's what a lot of people would say if you have a big session going on and Nowadays, computers are getting much better, so that's not really that much of a concern. But what I think is a really important thing that not a lot of people talk about is, let's say you have this reverb here, right? So this is your reverb that you want to send your different instruments to. And you have this main reverb with the same settings, so it's kind of almost simulating an environment. So if you want to have a drum kit in there, you want the, the drums are obviously going to be in the same room for the most part, unless you're doing something really strange. But nine times out of ten, if you're recording a drum kit, it's going to be in the same room so might as well have the same reverb settings for all the same instruments so let's say like all let's say one through ten was, was your drum kit all you got to do is come click on the channel that you want dial in a little reverb boom boom and it's much easier to just click a channel and just give it some verb rather than like click here open the slot find the reverb take a look at it maybe you have maybe you have a preset of what you like and then every time you have to load that preset and it just can become redundant so that's a much better way to do that. Click the channel, go to your reverb stand, and just crank however much you would like. Thank you for watching this video. I um, hope to have more tutorials out soon, and have a good day.